Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins in a crime-ridden dystopian Detroit, with protests by residents, who refuse to accept the government's decision to build a 40-foot wall around a Detroit neighborhood. Due to this rule, the areas within the high walls are dubbed brick mansions. To deal with the crime rate, which is so high that law enforcement is overwhelmed, the government isolated the area and declared it a no-go zone. The government is keeping a strict guard, with the help of the police and army, to ensure that residents do not enter the brick mansions area, which is considered to be a ghost town. As a result of the government's decision, schools and hospitals in this area have also been closed. Meanwhile, the mayor is meeting with his business associates. He assures his business partner that the brick mansions area would have to be demolished if it was to be rebuilt. The mayor guarantees that he will take care of everything, including the residents. Lino, a man in a flat, is opening a suitcase of pills that he stole from a dealer named K2. Lino attempts to dispose of all the packets, by dumping them in the bathtub. Outside, two of Lino's friends are attempting to obstruct K2, who is trying to find Lino. Several of K2's men shoot both of Lino's men. Lino fortunately is able to flee quickly. His cunning in running jumping and self-defense keeps him from being caught by them. Damien Collier, a detective, is looking at photos of criminals plastered on the walls of his apartment. His mission is to catch these criminals as soon as possible. Damien attends a banquet with a mobster named George one afternoon. During the dinner, George tells about K2's stolen package, and he believes that this is his chance to sell drugs to K2. However, George is perplexed as to who will take K2's place. Damien then offers to do the job because he has previous experience dealing with criminals. He reports the missing drug package to his boss, Tremaine Alexander, a drug lord, at K2 headquarters. K2 admits that locating the missing drug package is quite difficult. Tremaine shot one of his men to vent his rage, after receiving bad news from K2. He then threatens K2 and arrests Lino, in order to find the missing drug package. Terrified, K2 explains that by kidnapping Lino's lover, he can easily entice Lino to come without having to look for him. Damien is still following George into his base. As the cops continue to follow them from a van across the street, it turns out that Damien is on an undercover mission to arrest George. When Damien arrives at George's headquarters, he immediately activates the tracking device on his watch. According to the guard, a suspicious van is parked outside the building. When George sees it, he immediately recognizes it as an undercover police car. George is enraged after learning that his movements are being tracked, and he shoots one of his men because he believes they betrayed him. Damien sets off the emergency alarm and kidnaps George before he leaves. However, George's men attack Damien instead, and a shootout ensues. Damien is shot repeatedly by George's men until he appears overwhelmed. In the end, George is able to exit the base and walk straight into the car, where the rest of his men await him. Damien also exits the building, and manages to catch up to George by clinging to the trunk of the car. Damien, on the other hand, is struggling to hold on, because the car is moving in a zigzag pattern and at high speed. Not to mention that George continues to shoot at him from inside the car. Fortunately, Damien is able to cause the car to crash while turning a corner. George jumps out of the car, and is found dead at the police station. Damien returns home and cleans himself up. He then marks Tremaine Alexander as the next target he needs to capture. K2 and his partner, Reza, drive a car to the city center one afternoon. They are going to Lola's place of employment. When Reza arrives at the restaurant, he immediately points a gun at Lola. The woman attempts to deflect the gun by tossing the tray she is holding. She then runs to the kitchen, but K2 catches her and beats her until she passes out. Lola is kidnapped and imprisoned at Tremaine's headquarters in Brick Mansions. Later, Lola appears to have regained consciousness, and she is rushed to Tremaine. Lino however, appears unexpectedly by jumping from the roof and holding Tremaine hostage in front of all his men. Lino drives Tremaine to the police station near the Brick Mansion's border to be arrested. Unfortunately, when they arrive at the police station, Tremaine is released, and Lino gets arrested. The officer is revealed to be a corrupt cop who collaborates with criminals. Lino, furious when Tremaine leaves the police station, manages to break the corrupt cop's neck. Meanwhile, Major Reno and Beringer are introduced to Damien at the mayor's office. Damien is called in to complete a critical mission. According to Major Reno, a truck carrying nuclear bombs and missiles was hijacked last night, by a gang of criminals living in brick mansions. The hijackers open the bomb trigger device, which means that the time of the bomb detonation is already active. Damien can deactivate the bomb by entering a specific code. As a result, the mayor tasks Damien with locating the bomb. Then Damien is shown a photograph of a man who turns out to be Lino. Damien is assigned to work with Lino, 
who is well versed in the local lore of brick mansions. Lino gets handcuffed and driven into a car by prison guards. Damien soon follows the prisoner into his car. Damien has disguised himself as a prisoner in order to get closer to Lino. Damien sets off during the route by attacking the guard and stealing the car. He unties Lino's handcuffs under the overpass. On the other hand, Lino attacks Damien right away, because he wants to drive alone. They fight a bit before agreeing to ride in the car together. Lino tells him on the way that he has a problem with Tremaine. Lino's story is cut short because the cops pursue them. Damien chooses the alternative route to Brick Mansions, bypassing the main gate. They can also gain access to the Brick Mansions area by breaching a multi-story building. However, as they leave the building, the van's brakes fail, causing them to collide with the car in front of them. Lino quickly put the cuffs on Damien's hands and secured them to the steering wheel. Lino believes Damien works for the police. Lino then walks away, leaving Damien alone. Soon after, a group of people with guns attack Damien. Damien fights back and manages to get the handcuffs off his hands. He gets out of the car and attacks each member of the group one by one. Lino uses binoculars to watch Tremaine from the top of the empty building. Damien appears not long after and immediately handcuffs Lino. Damien invites Lino to collaborate because their goals are similar. Finally, they agree to collaborate in order to apprehend Tremaine. Lino also wants to save Lola. Lino and Damien then approach Tremaine, who is sitting in his office. Lino informs Tremaine that Damien is a cop who wants the bomb Tremaine stole returned. Tremaine then asks Damien to use the binoculars to look outside, where a missile is installed outside the building and is ready to be launched into the city center. Tremaine threatens to launch the missile into the city center, if the police and government don't pay a $30 million ransom. Damien immediately contacts Major Reno, and hands over the ransom demanded by Tremaine. The mayor informs Damien that the sum of money could bankrupt the city. Damien pretends on the phone that the price has been agreed upon, and asks for Tremaine's account number. Following the call, Damien requests that Tremaine deactivate the bomb. Tremaine, on the other hand, refuses, because he wants to ensure that the money is in his account before deactivating the bomb. Tremaine's men then escort Lino and Damien into a room. Tremaine calls K2 and inquires as to where he obtained the bomb. Tremaine is surprised by the government's willingness to pay such a large sum of money. K2 responds that he has information on weapon delivery and immediately hijacks it. Lino, who has been imprisoned, pretends to die inside the room, by shouting and making a fuss. They are eventually led out of the room for treatment. They attack Tremaine's men on the way, then flee in Tremaine's car. K2 and his men immediately pursue them. Brick Mansion's officers open fire on Damien and Lino from the top of the wall as well. Damien and Lino are forced to exit the vehicle after colliding with a pile of old tires. They run and jump into a parked school bus. This is discovered to be known by K2's men, who immediately open fire on the school bus with automatic rifles. K2 then directs two of his men to inspect the bus. However, Damien and Lino are not found inside. Meanwhile, at the mayor's office, Major Reno and Beringer argue about demolishing the Brick Mansion's neighborhood. Major Reno explains that launching the rocket would destroy the entire city, because the missile has a blast radius of 5 kilometers after exploding. Elsewhere, some of Tremaine's men in charge of controlling Tremaine's finances say they have been duped in his office. Tremaine's bank account balances have been depleted in some cases. Tremaine gets enraged and activates the missile using the remote control. Fortunately, Damien is able to shoot the device on the missile, so when Tremaine presses the button, nothing happens. Damien then shoots Reza in order to keep her away from Lola. Meanwhile, Tremaine has all of his men close all of the doors leading to the outside of the brick mansions, preventing Damien and Lino from fleeing. They keep running from Tremaine's men. They have to leap across buildings. Yeti, one of Tremaine's men, approaches them in an abandoned building, and a fight begins. Yeti proves to be a very strong man. He is struck several times but is able to get back up. Eventually, the two collaborate to bind Yeti so that he cannot move. Lino then smacks a large rock on Yeti's head, causing the man to fall. Tremaine, meanwhile, is repairing his rocket device. However, as he is about to press the missile button, he looks doubtful and abandons the mission. In reality, he doesn't want to take the lives of millions of innocent people. Reza is enraged when she sees this, because she thinks Tremaine is behaving weakly. Tremaine is then shot in the left arm. Lola, who has been watching their debate, attacks Reza, and manages to knock her off the roof of the building. Damien and Lino arrive not long after. Damien points a gun at Tremaine while discussing Tremaine's murder of his father. Tremaine defends himself by claiming that the incident is a trap rather than a murder. Damien is skeptical. 
Lino informs him that the code to deactivate the missile is the Brick Mansion area code, not the code to defuse the missile. Damien doesn't want to believe it. During their discussion, Lino reveals that the hijacking involving nuclear bombs and missiles never actually occurred. The mayor's plan to demolish the Brick Mansions is a ruse. The mayor and his business partners intend to build a fortune in the Brick Mansions neighborhood. Damien eventually let the bomb's launch time expire. The bomb's trigger then came to a halt. Damien realizes he has been set up. Soon after, Damien Lino Tremaine and his men storm the mayor's mansion, and recover the bomb trigger device. Damien attempts to enter the code in the presence of the mayor, but is immediately stopped by the mayor. The mayor states that the code requires the destruction of the brick mansions area, because a new city would be built there. The mayor is then asked to look through the window, where Tremaine's men have videotaped all of the mayor's words. The video footage is broadcast live on several television channels. The mayor is arrested not long after, for his criminal conspiracy. The brick mansions area is reopened to the public, and normal activities resume. When Damien arrives at Brick Mansions, the residents return to peace and commit no acts of violence. Uncovering a criminal conspiracy requires significant effort and cooperation. The role of the press is sometimes critical in exposing a crime if it is difficult to prove, especially if the perpetrators are people with power in the government system. Despite the fact that it appeared to be a difficult task, the heroes did not give up, and were able to stop the conspiracy in the government system. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.